Hard times can draw out the best or the worst in people. It is during experiences like wars that selfless heroism shows, but also that the monster within comes to light. Legend says we all have both darkness and light within our souls. It is hard to believe that there was any light at all in the soul of Edward Eppenstall. Born in Newcastle, County Wicklow, Ireland, around 1765, Edward was a huge man, according to various accounts, towering at between 6 foot 5 and 7 foot tall. His looks were handsome, but his heart was evil. He worked as an apothecary in Dublin for some time, before finding his true vocation in the military. In the turmoil preceding the rebellion of 1798, he joined the Wicklow Militia, attaining the rank of lieutenant in 1795. The Wicklow Militia, a regiment of men loyal to the English crown, had the task to sedate any disturbance and maintain order so as to avoid uprisings, but it became famous throughout the Irish Midlands for its acts of barbarism and its cruelty towards the population. Now a lieutenant and bestowed with the power that went with that title, Heppenstall initiated a reign of terror across the Midlands. Whenever he met a peasant on the street that looked suspicious to him, he would interrogate them. If not satisfied with the answers obtained, he would knock them to the ground with a punch. His next course of action was to slip his silk cravat around the neck of his unfortunate victim and pull them over his shoulder. In a final demonstration of cruelty, he would trot about like a horse, with his victim dangling and struggling until they hung lifeless from his frame. He was judge, jury and executioner. The technique of half-hanging that he developed, and which was used both during interrogations and as a method of execution, earned him the nickname of the Walking Gallows. In 1796, he travelled to the village of Moivor, County Westmeath, which was under martial law. As soon as he arrived, he had the alarm drum sounded, and when the sleepy peasants came out of their dwellings, the slaughter began. He left many lifeless, and torched many homes. He had the village smith and his two sons seized. He ordered the rope of a drum to be taken to him, and after making a noose, he hanged them all. First the sons, as the father was forced to watch, and then the father himself. On another occasion, he asked an old man for whatever guns he had, promising protection in exchange for the weapons. The old man brought forward the guns, and Heppenstall shot him in the heart. He was also responsible for the killing of four men in the Ballymore Fair and for the harming and terrorising of many more. His ruthlessness came to an end on the 18th of September 1800 when he died of what is described as a dropsical complaint, possibly Morbus pedicularis. Sources report his body being consumed by vermin which caused him excruciating pain and 21 days of agony before he finally passed. His body lies in St Andrew's Churchyard, Dublin. So hated he was that his friends were afraid that his grave would be desecrated. He was buried in an unmarked grave. His cruelty left a deep scar in the Midlands and in Derry Castle Forest near Granard, where he was stationed for a period, some swear his ghost can be seen wandering the grounds and the nearby Loch Gauna. Locals warn visitors not to dwell in the forest after dark. You do not want to meet Heppenstall, do you? They say. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for more spooky videos?